If you are at all curious about how to structure a partnership when you buy a new deal, this episode is for you. Hey, Small Axe community, it's your boy, Nico. This show is dedicated to helping you use your small axe to build a personal empire. So on this show, I'm going to share some real, raw, behind-the-scenes info that's going to help you build your own multifamily portfolio. So if you enjoy this show, I would love it if you could share it with somebody that you think could get value from it and write a review. It's the only way that we can grow this thing. Now let's get to work. Let's jump into this episode and start sharpening those axes. All right, let's jump right into this. So this conversation was inspired by a friend and colleague of mine who is looking, who just, he's got a deal under contract and he's looking to structure the partnership. So whether or not you want to do a joint venture, a JV with some partners, two, three, four, five, six partners, or if you want to structure a syndication, today's episode is going to give you the same structure, the same method of doing so. And I'm going to provide you with an equity split bucket spreadsheet that I'll share with you. You just have to email me. I'll email you back. Info at smallaxcommunities.com requesting this equity split uh, spreadsheet. So let's jump right into it. Now, you got a deal under contract or you're thinking about how it's going to go when you get a, a deal under contract. Either way, this particular person has multiple deals. This is not his first deal, but the conversation is still relevant. Brand new investor, first time buyer, multiple time buyer, third, fourth, fifth acquisition. It's all the same. So we're first going to start with the structure, whether you're going to do a syndication or which is going to be the topic of another podcast episode, but whether you're going to structure your deal as a syndication or a JV irrelevant for this conversation, it's the same thing. Here's what's going to happen. You got a deal under contract. You are going to bring in partners, let's say. If you're going to structure it as a syndication, you're going to do a 70-30 split. This is industry standard. It could be 60-40. It could be 80-20. You're going to focus on a 70-30 split right now. 70% is where the equity goes. Whoever puts in money gets a piece of that 70%. It could be you. It could be just limited partners. It could be a partner with limited say. That 70% is cat is for capital for cash for equity from investors and yourself the 30 percent is for the management the the people that are controlling the deal overseeing the day-to-day -day operations through asset management or property management or even other items which i'm going to share with you now so those are the active participants active participants are going to participate in the 30 percent bucket Passive or non or even active participants are going to participate in the 70% bucket by putting money in. You do not have to put money in the deal to participate in the 30% active bucket. Clear? So whether or not it's a JV joint venture and not a syndication or a syndication, you're going to structure it 70-30. This might be a little clearer if you have a joint venture. Let's take the example of a joint venture. You have five people that are going to be in this deal. You and one other person has done all the work. You've done all the research. You've reached out to all the brokers. You've negotiated this particular deal down. You put earnest money down. You and your partner have looked around to see who would want to invest and found a couple of other partners that want to invest. They're all going to come in as a joint venture. Now, you have already done a significant amount of legwork and you and your partner have rather, and you and your partner are going to participate mostly or take the majority or lion's share of that 30% bucket. You can still allocate percentages of that 30% active bucket to those new partners in your joint venture who came in with capital. And we're going to explain that on this podcast. So whether or not you're doing a syndication, or a joint venture, the structure for today will be as simple and plain as possible. 30% for the active members, 70% for the people that are putting in money. Let's go. So I'm going to send you this equity split spreadsheet. On the top, you're going to see how much of the equity raise you need. You're going to input that number. You're going to put in the purchase price. You're going to put in other numbers as well. You're going to leave the split as 70-30, 70% for the managers, I'm sorry, 30% for the managers, 70% percent 
for the members or the people that are putting in capital, which is also yourself if you're putting in capital. Here are the, the buckets. Sourcing, contract, due diligence, and closing is its own bucket. You're going to allocate a percentage of ownership for that bucket. Risk capital, EMD, earnest money deposit, and due diligence are also, due diligence money are also its own bucket. Capital raiser, money raiser, people who brought in people with money is its own bucket. Balance sheet guarantor, whoever is signing on the loan, the KP, the key principal, is its own bucket. Asset management is also its own bucket. So when you get this spreadsheet, you're leaving alone that 70%. That's where the capital goes. That's how you get more ownership if you put in more capital. But this 30% is broken down as follows. Sourcing, contracting, due diligence, and closing. Risk capital, meaning EMD, earnest money deposit, and due diligence. Money raiser, capital raiser, or capital raisers, plural. Balance sheet guarantor, or KP, and the asset management team, which oversees the longevity of the property. So here are the general guidelines for how much percentage to allocate to each deal. And then I'm going to talk about something afterwards. So sourcing contract, DD and closing, about 15% to 25%. Risk capital, EMD and DD can, any, can be anywhere from 15 to 30%. The capital raiser, the people that bring in capital, is going to be anywhere from 20, 30%. The balance sheet guarantor can be anywhere from five to 15%. Typical is around five to 10. Asset management is 30%, more or less, 25, 35%. You can even be do more than that. So here is what you need to consider on your particular deal when you're adjusting those buckets before we get into the rest of it. When you're adjusting these buckets, you have to assign them, talk with your partners and agree upon what each bucket is worth for that particular deal. Every deal is going to be a little different. There is no doubt about that. For example, we had one deal when we had $150,000 in risk money, earnest money that could have gone, that went hard, that could have been disappeared if we did not close on this deal for a hundred for a $1.5 million acquisition. That is a huge number. So we assigned 30% for that risk capital. So that was just one deal. But however, we've had other deals where we had no, no money, hard money on the line. We assigned 20%, 15%. That's acceptable. Sometimes it takes months or even years to negotiate a deal, get it under contract, go through the due diligence, and it's an excruciating time. You might want to assign 20, 25% to that bucket. The capital raise. Sometimes the capital raise is very easy. It's only a couple hundred thousand, let's say, and you have people ready to go that are willing to, and you don't even have to do a webinar or anything. We can assign to that maybe 20%. However, if, the, if it's very challenging, like we have had in the past, we assigned 35% to it. We had a $2.5 million raise, very challenging. We assigned 35% for that capital to incentivize our partners to work harder in that bucket. The balance sheet guarantor, obviously this comes along with risk. If you're signing on that loan, you are putting up your, you're risking your personal residence perhaps, or your personal income or your personal finances and net worth. So if it is a non-recourse loan, there's less risk involved. It, if it is a full recourse loan, there's more risk involved. So take that into consideration when assigning how much the balance sheet guarantor should be awarded for that bucket. And it could be split as well. For example, on one deal, me and my partner split that evenly 50-50. And another deal, we had three people. So it was 33% per. And we actually, another way to do it is to calculate each person's net worth and then divide that by the percent, the total percentage point. So for example, if I had my net worth, let's say was we, we needed a total net worth of a million dollars. My net worth is 600,000. My partners are 200 and 200. So they get 20% and 20% and I get 60% of that particular bucket. That's how it can work. And that's how it should work actually. Same thing with the capital raise, same thing with the sourcing contract. Every bucket is gonna be split up like that. So for example, for the risk capital, if I were to put in $100,000, and the total, the total amount of risk capital needed was $150,000, I'd get 75% of that bucket, okay? Back to the asset management. This is probably the most important, although it doesn't feel that way. And this is, this. be careful with this. When you want to assign a good number to this, the asset management is going to oversee the project for years to come. That is a very crucial bucket. 
when we're doing months of work prior and we're going through the closing process and it's scary and grueling and risky, you feel like the asset met, you could pull percentage away from the asset management bucket. I urge you not to, I say, keep it at least at 30%. 30% is fine. It is probably where I would draw the line and go minimum. Okay. Now let's jump into the spreadsheet itself and we're gonna be looking more at the breakdown details. So for sourcing, I, you're gonna see on this spreadsheet, there's 15% allocated for this in this particular example. I have 65% of that sourcing because I basically did everything for the sourcing. I assigned some percentages to other members and then we negotiate, we talk about it. Does this seem fair to you? Does this seem fair to you? We move to the next bucket. Risk capital is very cut and dry. Whoever wants to contribute more money to this bucket, meaning earnest money deposit, due diligence money for inspections, even legal fees, because you're going to start drafting up legal documents. You need an operating agreement, which I'm going to get to after this. If you're doing a syndication, you need a, a PPM <clears throat> and other uh, syndication documents, mm -hmm. and you're going to need a closing attorney. So all of these monies, are, all of these funds are going to go into the risk capital, as well as putting a deposit on your loan. If you're getting a loan, you need to put money down for the loan. There's a lot of money that's going to go into closing a multifamily deal. Here is an example of a $1.5 million acquisition. Our risk capital was about $67,000. So we were all in at $67,000. Capital raise. So this is very simple as well. You take the total amount of money you need. In this case, it's like 900,000. And whoever puts in X amount just gets that percentage for towards that 900,000. It could be your own money or people that you brought in. It's both. So for example, I put in, let's say $5,000 of my money and I brought in $330,000. So I took a total of 37% of this particular bucket. Okay, just calculate it for you to get you how much of the capital raise you brought in along with your investment. If you had five partners and the capital raise is $500,000 and you're all putting in $100,000, you're going to allocate $100,000 per person. However, if you got everybody involved and you took that and, and you put in uh, $100,000 and nobody else was involved in any portion up until now, they're basically limited partners. You're going to take that entire bucket for the 100,000 for yourself, the 400,000 for everybody else. Okay. Now, if they were working with you from the beginning, or you have, let's say you have one partner working with you from the beginning, there's two of you, you both put $200,000 down and one, uh, one partner gets the three and in, other investors at 300,000 you get $100,000 invested, 20%. Your partner gets the rest, 80%, because they're bringing 100,000 themselves and the other $300,000 to close the, close the deal, okay? So the in this particular case, the capital raise will not be allocated to the new members or limited partners if it's a syndication, new members if it's a JV. The new members can participate if it's a JV in the balance sheet. They could be KPs, okay? If you need them, you can ask them to be a KP and sign on the loan and assign them that percentage based on their net worth, unless they're taking the entire amount and it'll be hundred percent easy to calculate that as well. Asset management, you can do it yourself, you and your partner in that specific scenario, or you can invite the new members to participate in the asset management as well. Okay. And then assign amount. And I, and I have like little jobs and roles allocated to each person, but you're going to create your own jobs and roles for each asset manager on the team. And it also calculates it for you. Then you scroll all the way back to the top. And now we're looking at the manager split. And this is for that 30% bucket. And the overall split is I, in this particular case, have 28.5% of the general partnership, which gives me an overall ownership amount of 8.56% of the entire deal. Because remember, I only put $5,000 into this deal, but I did all the work and I am doing the work still as an asset manager. So I get 28.5% of the as of the manager bucket, a 30%, and I get 8.5% of the entire deal. So it's cut and dry, just like that. Now, again, so if you're going to have any questions here, please reach out to me, email me info at smallaxcommunities.com. And we're going to talk about this particular equity split bucket. I'm going to share it with you. Last, we need to talk about your legal documents. So if you're going to do a joint venture, you need to have an operating agreement that is very specific on who is doing what and like voting rights, what each uh, member's role is and who has final say in any decisions. Extremely important. You need to dial in your operating agreement that has to be very well done if you're doing a joint venture. If you are doing a syndication, 
same exact thing. You need to dial that operating agreement in, get it very specific, as specific as possible. You can always amend it later. That's totally fine. And then get your PPM, your syndication documents that you're going to send to investors. But back to the beginning. So let me not hesitate to say this again. Your legal documents are crucial here. You need to really focus on getting that operating agreement correct. Speak with a very high level, highly recommended syndication attorney or real estate attorney that has done this plenty of times and comes highly recommended that will work with you and your current team to work out this operating agreement so it is the best possible operating agreement for everybody. You might lose partners along the way. Consider that. You might have partnerships fail. You might have people pass away. You need to consider all of this. You might have somebody want to pull their money out, have a family disaster, have something go wrong. You need to consider all this. You might need find have a partner that turns angry, upset, wants to fight, wants to argue. You need to consider all of this. Okay, so back to the buckets. This is going to be your partnership structure moving forward. It's going to be extremely cut and dry. Whether you're going to do a syndication or a JV, you're going to get this 70-30 split. 70% is where the money goes. 30% is where the active members participate. Simple. And one last thing, it, whether you're doing a JV or a syndication, you are entitled to take an acquisition fee. It's okay if you're doing a JV, you can take an acquisition fee and still maintain 30% control over the deal as the manager. It's okay. Reach out to me, guys. Know that every single day I am thinking of ways to enhance your investing career. Know that I am thinking about you and your journey and know that I'm here to teach and help and guide and just give everything I possibly can. I love you guys. Have an awesome week. All right. And that's a wrap, Small Axe community. So I wanted to take a minute to say thank you so much for listening to the show. And if you liked it or got any value from it, it would really mean the world to me if you would share it with someone else and write a review. Remember, guys, keep sharpening those axes. Let's get out there. Let's crush it. Love you guys. Thank you.